Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Athreos Sacrifice deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Built around Athreos, Shroud Veiled, a 6 mana legendary enchantment creature god, but it only turns into a 4-7 indestructible creature as long as our devotion to white and black is at least 7, otherwise it's going to be this indestructible enchantment sitting in play, providing value because at the beginning of our end step, we can put a coin counter on another target creature, can even be the opponent's creature, and whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, we can return that card to the battlefield under our control. So the idea behind the deck is that we have a lot of ways of sacrificing our own creatures for value, and especially once we get Athros in play and put a coin counter on the creature we sacrifice, we can bring it back right away, providing even more incremental advantage, and then of course our deck is also pretty good at enabling Devotion, so Athros can turn into a 4-7 creature to start attacking and blocking. So let's go over the entire list, and let me explain some of the thought process that went behind choosing all these different cards, since at first glance we've got a lot of random numbers here in the list. So Athreos, of course, is a 6 mana card. It doesn't always have an immediate impact when it comes into play, so there's only so many copies of Athreos we can play. It's also legendary, so we're only playing one copy of Athreos, but to make up for it we're also playing three copies of Angelic Tutor, which is a 3 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for any enchantment card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So in the late game, once we're all set up, we can use Angelic Tutor to find additional copies of Athreos, but in the early game, if we're still setting up, then the tutor might be better served searching up a cheaper interactive enchantment to help us survive. So we essentially have four copies of Athreos, but uh, we only have one actual copy, so we don't risk drawing multiples. But then of course Angelic Tutor also gives us access to this toolbox of different enchantments that we can search up in different situations. So at 2 mana we've got the full playset of a Burglar Rat, 2 mana for a 1-1 that when it enters the battlefield each opponent has to discard a card. So just a nice 1-1 creature with a cool enter battlefield ability that we wouldn't mind triggering again later in the game once we sacrifice the Burglar Rat and maybe get it back with Athreos and also provides some cheap sacrifice fodder for our various sacrifice effects. We also have a one-off copy of Lampad of Death's Vigil. Now, not an impressive card. Two mana for a 1-3. For one mana, we can sacrifice any creature, and then each opponent loses one life, and we gain one life. But the reason we have one copy of a Lampad in the deck is so that our Aegilic Tutor later in the game can also help us find a Sacrifice Engine, because outside of Lampad, we mostly rely on Woestrider to sacrifice our creatures. And, of course, uh, Woestrider is not an enchantment, so we can search that up with the Aegilic Tutor. So instead we have a one-off Lampad, which is an enchantment creature, and then the Drain ability from Lampad can sometimes also help us close out a game if the opponent is low on life. And then we have three copies of Myers Grasp as a nice two-mana removal spell, enchanting a creature giving it minus three, minus three. It's another enchantment we can search up with Angelic Tutor. Then moving up the curve, we have two copies of Playcrafter, a 3-2 creature that when it enters the battlefield makes each player sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. So if a player doesn't have any creatures but only planeswalkers, they'll be forced to sacrifice a planeswalker. And if a player doesn't have any creatures or planeswalkers, they'll be forced to discard a card instead. So Playcrafter plays quite well with our cheap Burglar Rat, for instance, that we don't mind sacrificing, so we're left with a 3-2 creature, as well as forcing the opponent to sacrifice something. And then we have the full playset of Woe Strider, which is the main sacrifice engine in the deck. When a Strider enters the battlefield, it is joined by an 0-1 white goat creature token, and at any point we can sacrifice another creature to scry one. So the Strider gives us an instant speed, free, sacrifice engine that can help us enable our various synergies, and the scry one also gives us some much needed card selection to help us assemble our various combos. And later in the game, for 5 mana, we can escape Woe Strider from the graveyard, by exiling four other cards from our graveyard, and then the Strider escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it, and once again will be joined by the GOAT token as well. So definitely one of the more important cards in the deck. We also have a one-off copy of Banishing Light we can search up with our tutor as a nice versatile removal spell, exiling target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield, as well as our three copies of Angelic Tutor. Next up we've got two copies of Nightmare Shepherd as a nice 4 mana, 4-4 four, four enchantment creature demon with flying, so we can also search it up with our tutor, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we may exile it, and if we do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So the Shepherd also plays quite well with our other sacrifice effects, since we can potentially turn our creature into a 1-1 one, one token, 
And important to note about that token is that it will re-trigger its enter the battlefield ability once again, which is the part we're most interested in. So we can maybe make the opponent discard an extra card if it's a burglar rant or sacrifice an extra creature. And then the token will also keep its devotion, which can be important for Athreos, so it can more easily keep its uh, devotion to turn into a creature. And important to point out as well is that we sadly can't exile a creature to the Shepherd as well as get it back with Athreos, even though Athreos mentions exile, just because the uh, creature would first go to the graveyard before it gets exiled by the Shepherd, so it kind of loses the coin counter along the way, so it no longer registers with Athreos, unfortunately. And then next up we've got the full playset of Basilica Bellhaunt, which adds a ton of devotion for Athreos, a nice 3-4 creature that when it enters battlefield each opponent has to discard a card and we gain 3 life, so another great enter battlefield ability to re-trigger once again thanks to our Nightmare Shepherd, or to bring back from the graveyard thanks to Athreos. And then we also have the full playset of Kaya's Wrath. Now Kaya's Wrath might seem a little bit anti-synergistic with this deck since we have so many creature synergies that we are trying to pull off but it's just such an important card against a lot of the aggressive decks as a way to reset the board, especially if we spend turn 3 playing our Igelic Tutor, which doesn't affect the board, so we kind of need that reset button to help us recover. And Kaya's Wrath is still quite good with Athreos, since we can potentially put a coin counter on the opponent's creature and then use our Kaya's Wrath to gain access to the opponent's creature that way. So it does have some neat synergies there as well, and we can also potentially gain a bit of life by destroying our own creatures, so that incidental life gain can also be relevant. Next up we've got two copies of Cavalier of Night as a nice 4-5 a lifelinking creature, also adds 3 devotion for Athreos, and when the Cavalier enters battlefield we can sacrifice another creature, and if we do we can destroy target creature an opponent controls. So as long as we have some sacrifice fodder, Cavalier turns into a nice removal spell as well, and between our Burglar Rats, Playcrafters and Goat Tokens, we usually have something we don't mind sacrificing. And later in the game, if the Cavalier dies, we can return target creature with Convert mana cost 3 or less, from our graveyard straight to the battlefield, so it can also help us get back a Strider, Playcrafter or Burgle Rat. And once we can put a coin counter on Cavalier with Athreos, it's also one of the better creatures to sacrifice, since we get the benefit from the Dice ability as well as the Enter the Battlefield ability once again. Next up we also have two copies of Elspeth, Conquer's Death, as another powerful enchantment we can search up with our tutor. On the first chapter when we play Conquer's Death we can exile target permanent and opponent controls with convert mana cost 3 or greater. Second chapter is not super relevant, and then on the third chapter we can return target creature or planeswalker card from our graveyard to the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter or a loyalty counter. No planeswalkers in this deck, so we're just going to be returning creatures with plus 1 plus 1 counters, so a nice potential 2 for 1. And then to top off our curve we've got our 1 copy of Athreos of course, and to sacrifice our creatures we've got our 4 copies of Voistrider and our 1 copy of Lampad to potentially sacrifice creatures at instant speed, so we can put a coin counter on one of our creatures and then sacrifice them right away to maybe re-trigger and enter a battlefield ability. Otherwise we also have our 2 copies of Playcrafter and 2 copies of Cavalier of Night to later still sacrifice our creatures once they get a coin counter, and then uh, we've got a one-off copy of Ethereal Absolution as well, which can sometimes be a better choice than Athreos if we're facing a go-wide deck, as creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one, and creatures we control get plus one, plus one, so a nice reverse anthem effect. And Absolution also gives us some graveyard hate, for four mana we can exile target card from an opponent's graveyard, and if it was a creature card, we get to make a 1-1 white and black spirit token as well, which will get the plus one plus one bonus, so a nice 2-2 flyer to help us close out the game. Then our mana base, we're playing 26 lands since the curve is pretty high in the deck, and we don't really want to miss any land drops. We've got uh, three castles, one castle Ardenvale, which can also make 1-1s that we don't mind sacrificing, and two copies of castle Lochthwain to draw more cards if we're on empty couple basics, 7 planes and 6 swamps, and then a lot of dual lands for Godless Shrine, 2 Scour Barons and for Temple of Silence. The reason we're not playing Yorok's Fan Lurker is because we would need to add a bit more black in our mana base, so that's why we're playing the Burglar Rat instead, but if you would have more black man in the mana base of course Fan Lurker would be the better 2-drop. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, yeah a reasonable hand. Lampad into Strider. Don't often need multiple sack engines and play at the same time, but think I'm still fine playing them out. Could of course keep some in hand if we're planning to Kaya's Wrath, so depending on the matchup I could sandbag one of them. Fabled Passage. Eh, just play a Lampad for now.
opponent on black green. Yeah, I'll just play a strider. Don't know for sure yet what to search up with the tutor, so we'll just curve out for now and then see what uh, we need to get. Might be an Elspeth Conqueror's Death if we need to get rid of a Planeswalker opponent on Sultai. Well, they could be playing some sort of Sultai ramp casualties of war deck. For now we'll hit for four. Play a Bell Haunt. So we've got some nice pressure. Wouldn't mind hitting my land drops, I could sag the goats to achieve that, or we could keep it for uh, the lamp pads to maybe deal some extra damage. The only sweeper I can really think of here would be Ritual of Soot, which doesn't kill the bell haunt. It's gonna be a Polucranos Unchained instead. Alright, it's pretty scary. So let's go find an answer. Another Strider doesn't quite do it. And then I'll probably just take my draw step. Another Bell Haunt. Yeah, I guess we'll Bell Haunt and just kind of stay back for now. Could still attack since Belucranos loses counters if he gets dealt damage. So if I attack with Strider and Bell Haunt, they, let's say, block Strider. Left with a 3-3 Pelucranos, Bellhaunt gets him down to 10. I mean, it could still be fine. Alternatively, I could tutor and search up like a Banishing Light for Pelucranos. Or Elspeth Conquers Death if we want to guarantee our fifth land drop by sacking something to the Strider. That's also reasonable. Yeah, maybe we'll take that approach. And then they might fight with Pelucranos before we get rid of it. But then Conqueror's Death could get back whatever we lose in the fight. Pretty happy they fight the Bell Haunts. Because I wanted to kind of sacrifice something to guarantee my fifth land drop. Now of course if we sacrifice, Pelucranos will stay a 6-6 instead of losing three counters. But if the plan is Conqueror's Death, that uh, doesn't matter. Alright, so I might have to sack Lampad as well here. If I want to make sure we conquer death. And I think I'm okay doing that. So I can chump and unsack. Could always switch plans and just Gaia's Wrath here. But it would be nice to keep Strider in play. Alright. Maybe got a bit greedy and should have gotten uh, Banishing Light instead. But with uh, three looks essentially, we were pretty likely to find a fifth land. I guess just attack and burglar rats, and then can sack the rats to maybe find lands. Of course now they know about uh, Conqueror's Death, so they can kind of play around it. Burgle Rats and uh, Fabled Passage, kind of fueling the escape on Pelucranos as well, but if we can exile it, then it doesn't matter. And against the Sultai deck, Banishing Light also might not be super reliable, as they can easily have ways to destroy enchantments, so that's why the Conqueror's Death is a little bit safer. So they might find both of my creatures. Now it's going to be a Voracious Hydra instead. So maybe change of plans here. I think we're just going to Chaos Wrath now. In which case I'm still fine chumping and sacking. Still wouldn't mind hitting land 5. Bell haunts, okay, but we have one in hand already. Alright, still no lands. I probably should have cast a wrath before attacking. 
since the chances of my opponent blocking were very high and I miss out on one life because Chaos Wrath gains one life for each creature that dies to it. Alright, Nissa. Well, I would love a fifth land here. Because if Nissan taps, we could be in trouble. The land fights for us. All right, there we go. So Polukronos could uh, escape. But then if we draw another land, we could tutor up a Banishing Light to get rid of it. Don't think we have time for another Conqueror's Death. And if they do get rid of the Banishing Lights, Polychronos will return as a 6-6 and not a 12-12. Back up Nyssa. Alright. And we'll get back Bell Haunts. And then we'll just empty their hand here. Liliana? Yeah, that would have been scary. And Hydroid Crisis with Nissa in play would have drawn them a million cards. Well, put on stop decking, but they have a lot of good top decks. With Nissa in play especially. The 3-4 Bell Haunt doing a reasonable job on defense, but if they can ultimate Nissa, that's also an issue. So we do need to find our second Conqueror's Death. Or maybe a Nightmare Shepherd to fly over. Bell Haunt, not ideal. So I think we escape to sack and go digging. And then just keep the creatures in the graveyards. Trading Bell Haunt for land doesn't seem necessary here. Keeps card on top. Uh oh. Harness the elements. Opponent pluses Nissa but doesn't animate a lands. Definitely playing around another Chaos Wrath, which makes sense. Well. Let's go digging here. Definitely don't need swamp. Temple. So do I sack Bell Haunts? Our best top deck by far would be the second Conqueror's Death. Otherwise, I'm not so sure. Is there anything else that gets rid of Nyssa? I guess if we kill one land, we can attack Nyssa. So just the removal spell would be okay. But if I sack the Bell Haunt, that's maybe no longer the case. So I think I'll just take my draw step. Shepherds, okay. So I can, in their draw step, sack the Bell Haunts. Or I guess uh, sack the Burglar Rats, that's probably better. Say so we'll play Shepherd. And then Bell Haunt can attack Nissa. I'm fine if it just trades for a uh, Forest here. And then I can play Burglar Rat and sack Burglar Rat to the Strider, which will trigger with Shepherd to discard whatever they top decked. And we also get to gain some more life here for what it's worth. So in their draw step... I'll go full control just in case here. Before they get a chance to play whatever they drew, we'll sang the rats. And 
And a casualties of war was what they kept on top. Yeah, that would have been pretty scary. Alright, so they can ultimate Nyssa to make their lands indestructible, but then they lose Nyssa. And Shepard can start pressuring Nyssa next turn. His opponent just pluses. Alright, we still have a chance here. And then um, I'll sack their van just to improve my draw step. Playcrafter is reasonable, although honestly I'm probably just going to bell haunt and discard their draw step again. So I don't have enough mana for Playcrafter and they have a lot of lands they can sack. Another bell haunt, I mean, I guess I'll keep it since as the board sits, we are going to pull ahead. And if we can lock out our draw step, that's good enough. So I do think we need to attack Nissa, even though we could go face. Do not assume I am fragile. And then again, draw step, make them discard. And uh, yeah, that was another good card that we made him discard. Kaya's Wrath can probably go now. So they can no longer ultimate Nyssa. We've got Strider playing defense. I could have still kept the Kaya's Wrath so that if we do eventually kill Nyssa, we can just kill all their lands. But it didn't seem necessary. Play Crafter to draw. So... Do I start going face or do I finish off Nyssa? Opponent's at 10, so it's still gonna take a couple turns to actually kill them, so I would rather make sure we kill Nyssa. I will endure. And then we'll do the same. Trace is discarded, that's another big one. Alright, well, we're out of discard effects now. But Nissa will be dead, so that limits their top deck potential a little bit. The land shall conquer you. And then, do I sack something on upkeep? Yeah, one bell hunt can probably go. Alright, so let's see what's on top. Cavalier seems fine. Take out Nyssa. Now they could still top deck like a Casualties of War, which would be very good here. Opponent passes. And it's going to be a Tyrant's Corn destroying the Strider. Fair enough. I guess that happens. Get to make a token. So we still have our Sack Engine. Even though Cavalier could have eventually gotten the Strider back. Sack the goats. And my opponent packs it in. Wow, what a game. That was definitely a close one. The draw stab discards definitely saved the day. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable. Double Myers Grasp should be good against the green deck. Gonna bottom the land there, even though we will eventually need double black, since we're pretty likely to draw another black source at some point. 
Well, unfortunately, Wolf of Haven, we can't Mars Grasp, but we'll just play a Burgle Rat for now. Gets rid of a Barkhide Troll, so maybe a Green Devotion deck. Yurvo, a little bit too big for our Mars Grasp, unless we want to use both of them. Which I guess is reasonable. Still adds three Devotion, which of course is important for them. Guardian adapts, getting another copy. And Yorvo gets in for two. Could have considered attacking for one since Yorvo was likely to pick up a counter here. So playing Belhaunt seems fine here. Gives us a double block on the Guardian, should still be able to block Yorvo. And get a card out of their hands, it's just a land. And this is also a matchup where Kaya's Wrath is definitely going to be quite powerful. Could also decide to kind of keep our Devotion and uh, just play an Athreos to stabilize the board, which is also a valid approach here. Or I can double block the Guardian. I think for now I'll take it. Also, if we draw Nightmare Shepherds, next turn blocking becomes a lot more appealing. Guardian gets another Guardian. Alright, Cavalier of Knights, not bad. So I can play that using Godless Shrine, sacking Burglar Rats, and then killing, I guess, a 4 4 Guardian. And I'll still stay back with the Bell Hunt, I think. Our deck's not really trying to sneak in points of damage. If we win, we usually win by a landslide once we take over. Alright, so they're gonna get their last Growth Chamber Guardian, but we now have a 4-5 Cavalier in play, which they can get past. And there's our Chaos Wrath, but uh... Let's play this Athreos. Gotta wait for the animation to finish. And then I'll put a counter on the Cavalier, I believe. So we've got a 4-7 Indestructible in play. Could play a Kai's Wrath next turn. We'll see. And it's gonna be Nylea, Keen-Eyed. That one we can't remove with our Kaya's Wrath, so that's where we need Elspeth Conquers Death or Banishing Lights. Playcrafter also doesn't quite do it against Nylea, because if we sweep the board first, then Nylea of course isn't a creature anymore, so they don't have to sacrifice it to the Playcrafter. Playing the Playcrafter here is still reasonable. Sacrifice Cavalier. Opponent sacks a Guardian. Bring back Burglar Rat, opponent discards. And then we can sacrifice probably the Playcrafter here. And destroy the big Yorvo. They could have another copy in hand, but so be it. I guess we'll get an attack in with Athreos. And then end of turn, put another counter on the Cavalier. Cavalier of Thorns. Fair enough. So both decks with their Cavaliers and their Gods. Can start making tokens with Castle Ardenvale as well. 
could decide to just hit the reset button with Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, for now I think I'm just happy putting coin counters on creatures and passing the turn. If we have another Myra's Grasp, I could take out Nylea with two of them. But uh, not for now. Could also put a counter on the Cavalier of Thorns from the opponent, don't hate that. That way we can get it back once we do decide to pull the trigger on Kaya's Wrath. And yeah, opponent packs it in. We were eventually going to find something like an Igelic Tutor or an Elspeth Conqueror's Death to get rid of Nylea and completely take over the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hands, got some early interaction with the Myers Grasp and then some heavy hitters with Shepherd and Conqueror's Death. Facing Temple of Malice. For now I think I'm playing the Baron since whenever possible if you can delay the decision on the scry it's usually better because we're gonna have more information. For instance if I draw land here then I know I can scry lands to the bottom. But if I don't, then I might want to scry lands to the top later. Thought Erasure. Probably not going to take the Mars Grasp. If we're up against the control deck, then Mars Grasp is one of our weaker cards in the matchup. Takes the Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which is kind of the more guaranteed two for one. But we draw another one. Alright, I guess now we'll Temple. You look for a three mana play. Wastrider, perfect. Get our goats. Epic Downfall. Yeah, that's a pretty effective removal spell for the Strider. So I could sag the goat just to scry one. Or I could keep it in play in case we need it for, like, Cavalier. Um, I think I'll keep it in play. Could also be relevant if my opponent later plays Liliana and we need some creature to sacrifice to that effect. Probably would have scryed Lampad to the bottom, given the choice. Opponent passes, another Strider. Just attack for four. And then... Do need to be aware of potential Sweepers, Ritual of Soot, Storm's Wrath. I think I'm okay still playing the Strider here. Seems a bit more impactful than the Lampad, but now with two Goats, the Lampad could potentially deal some damage. Nickel Bolas, okay. Bolas goes after the Shepherds. We'll sacrifice it to Scry. Temple of Silence. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. I will need land 5 eventually. This one gives us some value and I might not want to play Cavalier next turn anyway. So I can just play a land pad, kill Nicol Bolas, take it from there. And then bottom the swamp. I will return one day. Another Nicol Bolas. That one we will probably have to conquer. And we'll get rid of the Myers Grasp. I you eons ago. And then I could sack some goats if we expect a sweeper to hit us next turn. Just to drain them for two. I think I'm gonna just keep them in play for now. Ooh, Playcrafter. Well, I guess change of plan. We'll just Playcrafter Nicol Bolas. Bolas. 
and keep Conqueror's death for their next planeswalker, maybe. We've got two mana for lamp pads. More nickel bolas, okay. In exchange for eternal servitude. Opponent is at 10, so they're definitely within potential burn range from the lamp pad here. So we don't quite have enough to kill them here. So I'll just take my draw step. So we'll just take out Nicol Bolas, hit them for three. And I'm probably okay playing Cavalier just to increase the pressure. Doesn't die to a Storm's Wrath or a Ritual of Suits. And not sacrifice anything. And then if the Cavalier dies, it can also bring back Strider or maybe Playcrafter. Rampage to sack a creature, sure. And we got there, awesome. So we managed to beat the triple Nickel Bolas. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This ends pretty slow, but we do have Kaya's Wrath to maybe catch us back up. So we'll try it. Hopefully the Gruul Sleeve means my opponent's playing a red-green creature deck, in which case Kaya's Wrath is pretty effective. All right, triple Kaya's Wrath. If they're not playing creatures, this hand's pretty bad. Gets a mountain, all right, that's step one. Just need to see the forest now. And a breeding pool, and our opponent passes, so... Probably means they're on Team of Reclamation, which uh, doesn't play a whole lot of creatures. So our gamble might not have paid off. We can tutor for answers, like Banishing Lights and uh, Elspeth Conquers Death, which can get rid of the namesake enchantments. But uh, Triple Chaos Wrath are pretty much dead cards. So let's tutor. And we get a Banishing Lights or a... Conquer's Death. I'm gonna play Shepherd next turn. So if they counter it with like a Thassa's Intervention, Conquer's Death could get the Shepherd back, but then I guess they wouldn't counter it if they see it coming. Both are reasonable here. Let's take the Conquer's Death. The upside of Banishing Light is that it could exile the Reclamation if they play it this turn, as opposed to having to wait another turn. And there it is. So the Shepherd resolves. And a Borrower's gonna bounce it. I mean, a second chapter on Conqueror's Death could still be relevant in the matchup too. Making their spells more expensive. Opponent keeps the card on top. Bell haunts. So we've got some options. Probably need to conquer Death the Reclamation right away, even if that means not getting a ton of value from the other chapters. And if they counter this and we draw land, I could still tutor up a Banishing Light next turn to try again. It's gonna be a Gross Spiral. Well, at least the Brazen Borrower we have plenty of answers to. So that's not an issue. Keeps card on top. Mm, 
All right, so we can bell haunt, make him discard. Probably beats playing Shepherd. They can't really counter me since they have to pay two more for their non-creature spells. Keeps both on top. And one expansion explosion discarded, they could have another one in hand. And it's going to be a 6 mana Wilderness Reclamation. So now the plan is to tutor up a Banishing Lights. Hit for 3. Gonna be a thousand intervention to counter it. All right. Well, they kept uh, two cards on top, so the next one could be another big card draw spell, like expansion explosion. It's gonna be a thirst for meaning instead. Still quite good here. So they have access to a lot of mana, and now they just need to find a way to close out the game. And our hands. Hasn't really improved. Uro in the graveyard, that one we can wrath away. So take three. Opponent draws a card, goes up to 16. And I'm probably going to Wrath before attacking, so I gain one life from the Belhon dying instead of trying to bluff three damage, which my opponent probably doesn't take. At least my opponent doesn't have any castles in play to help them improve their draw steps, so they're just top decking. Tutor could get Elspeth Conqueror's Death, number two, but we don't have enough mana to do both. But I can search it up. Could also get the uh, six mana Absolution to exile Uro from the graveyards. But dealing with the enchantments might be more important. And I guess Elspeth Conqueror's Death can also conquer Uro. So we've got that flexibility. I guess the argument for just exiling Uro is that if they do top deck a big X spell. Yeah, alright, now especially with double reclamation, I don't see a point in exiling one of them. So we'll just exile the Uro instead. But I don't see myself dealing 19 damage before my opponent top decks another expansion explosion, especially now with Castle Ventress in play. So I'm afraid this game is not gonna end well. Absolution, another way to deal with Uro, but it's pretty slow here. Did our opponent leave any creatures in the graveyard? They did not. Yeah, our opening hand was pretty poor for the matchup, but I think in general the Reclamation deck is heavily favored.
opponent holding a Storm's Wrath. So does Cry 2 from Castle. Just needs to find an expansion explosion here to put us out of our misery. But bottoms both. Alright, so we still have a chance. Back up Uro. Although they don't have enough cards in Graveyard at the moment. They need one more. Uh oh, opponent's gonna start floating mana. That's never a good sign. So this might be the lethal explosion. Five minutes later. And it's gonna be Electro Dominance instead. Alright, killing us in style. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with, uh, yeah, a keepable hand. Got some early interaction, some early discard, and then a Shepherd plus Cavalier's not bad. Facing Monorads. Alright, so this is gonna be a true test. Cavalier, of course, quite good against Monorads. And we do have some good early plays. But a card like Basilica Bellhounds, which used to be a house against uh, Monorad, now a bit less effective now that their game plan has switched to Embercleave instead of uh, a lot of burn spells. For now we'll just grasp the Steamkin before it gets out of hand. And then the Burgle Rat can jump in front of the Scorch Spitter. Rimrock Knights. And play Rimrock Knights. Alright, hopefully no Ember Cleaves next turn. But they would need lands plus Ember Cleave here, which is not a guarantee. Gets rid of a Bone Crusher Giant, so their hand is definitely loaded. Yeah, we'll trade for the Rimrock Knights. And it's gonna be another Rimrock Knight on the Spitter. So we're down to 10, but a bell hunt to get their last card. And it was indeed Embercleave. Well, now we're in good shape. And our opponent explodes. Cavalier next turn to seal the deal. Opponent was on a mulligan, so if they had a few extra cards to work with, we maybe wouldn't have been able to make them discard Embercleave. But uh, yeah, if we draw the right early interaction, we definitely have a chance against Monored. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with, uh, yeah, a reasonable hand. Need double white for Chaos Wrath still, but we can make some plays in the meantime. Incubation. Hmm. All right, so this is the Teamer Adventure deck. Well, let's uh, play our Burglar Rat for now. Banishing Light can get rid of a potential Lucky Clover, which is pretty important in the matchup. Although the Brazen Borrower can bounce it. Innkeeper, also definitely worthy of removal, and Mars Grasp is one way to do it, or we could Play Crafter. I guess for now maybe Mars Grasp, since Play Crafter might be able to get something bigger. Like they could play a Fae of Wishes next turn which I can't kill with the Mars Grasp. Also getting the Play Crafter in play to start applying pressure could be nice too. And then I guess if they blocked with the Fail of Wishes I could use the Mars Grasp to finish off uh, the Fort Toughness creature. Alright, I uh, did draw double white, so we could Chaos Wrath at some points. For now, I guess we could Idyllic Tutor and find maybe an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, maybe get Athreos right away. Playing Playcrafter now maybe not as important when we have a Chaos Wrath to reset the board. They might have a Stomp at the ready here besides the Brazen Borer to Stomp the Burgle Rats, but that's fine. Athros is a bit clunky if it gets bounced by the Brazen Borrower. So I think for now we'll go with the uh, Conqueror's Death. Also, we're 
lacking a sacrifice engine to fully leverage Athros right away. Stomp kills the rats, as expected. Opponent passes, so they're gonna flash in a Brazen Borrower end of turn. I could do nothing, I could play a Playcrafter, don't really want to activate Castle with four cards in hand. I'll play a Playcrafter, why not? And then we can conquer the Brazen Borrower next turn, maybe. Keeping up two mana once again, maybe for another stomp or a petty theft. Yeah, let's Chaos Wrath. Don't want to get too greedy, just get her two for one. And then the Strider is probably going to get answered, but we'll be able to escape it soon. Alright, it's gonna get bounced. And they can replay the borrower. Well, we've been able to avoid Innkeeper and Lucky Clover. They do also play the um, Escape to the Wilds, I think it's called, the 5 mana draw spell, which can definitely provide a lot of advantage for them. Cavalier's not bad. Can play Cavalier, sacking the token. Hope they don't have another stomp or uh, petty theft. And then kill either the beast or the flyer. Could just conquer death here, which is maybe a little safer. And conquer's death doesn't get rid of the lucky clover, so I don't think there's anything I'm saving it for. I guess it could have like a great hench, but we can still banishing light that. Because the problem with playing Cavalier is that if they do have another 2-mana interactive spell and get rid of the goats, then the Cavalier won't be able to kill anything. Take 4. Alright, so now their non-creature spells are more expensive, so we don't need to fear a two-mana interactive spell as much. And we can Cavalier killing the beasts. Looks like they might have another Brazen Borrower in hand. Alright, they're not gonna play it yet. Brazen Borrower staying back, not sure why. So Playcrafter versus Burgle Rat. Playcrafter not too impressive when they have a 1-1 token they can sacrifice. So we'll get the rats. Discards a Brazen Borrower, fair enough. Yeah, I guess I'll attack with Cavalier, why not? Can maybe Strider first in case... We need to sacrifice something. Still want to keep Banishing Lights in hand for now. And once we're empty-handed, we can also start leveraging the castle. Alright, there's the Great Henge. 
Could have also played out a second strider, would have been totally reasonable since I don't expect them to play any sweepers. But maybe they could have gone like Fay of Wishes, search up some sweeper and then wipe the board. And I would rather have the second strider in hand, but... Mostly also to empty your hand for Castle Lockthway and it's good to get the second strider out there. Alright, so upkeep, I'm probably fine scrying by sacking the goats. Another strider. Don't think we need more of those. Bellhaunt's quite good. So definitely good at banishing the lights. The hench, opponents, not quite dead here if we get rid of the 1 1 token, but that's fine, we can. Win over the course of two turns. They can also gain two from the hench. Definitely should have started by attacking, since it might change their play, not knowing about the hench getting exiled. But, uh, shouldn't be too important here. Alright, and then we'll bell hunt, I guess. Beanstalk Giant has an 8-8. That's fine, so they've got one blocker. But they're still taking exactly 8 here. Alright, sweet, so we managed to deal with the Innkeeper, didn't see any Clovers, and we were able to beat the Adventure deck. Sadly, didn't see a ton of Athros in action, but it is still only a one-off, so we don't expect to draw it all that often, especially when it's not always right to search it up with the Tutor. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.